My name is Sunny Ajmera and I'm a technical director at Agile Evipro company. Today in my presentation, I will be going over forms and workflows and how they can be leveraged in SailPoint Norm for various use cases around non-employees. Uh, some of the common use cases uh, some of the common use cases that we see, um, uh, some of the common use cases that we see for non-employees are onboarding, offboarding of the non-employees, uh, transferring the contractor from 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 a different department or manager or extending their end date, and even sending the notification to the manager when their end date is approaching. A uh, few of the key components that I've used in my solutions are going to be uh, attribute, forms, pages, and workflows. Attributes uh, are nothing but um, an object that store information about a profile, uh, for example, first name, last name, email address, uh, and there are around 13 to 14 different kind of attributes that you can create in them. Um, and to just give you an example, it could be a text field, text area, a drop down. Uh, tags, checkbox, radio buttons. So there are plenty of different kind of attributes that you can create. Um, and there's another component called value builder, which is, uh, if I have to give you um, a reference, it's more like transform or rules that can be used to dynamically generate the value of the attribute. And it can be used for attributes like employee number, usernames, email address. Um, moving on to the uh, next component form, uh, forms are nothing but a collection of attributes that can be uh, displayed uh, to the performer requester and it can be used to gather the data or display the data. There are certain kind of uh, forms, uh, for example, request form, approval forms, and uh, read-only forms that can be used within the workflows uh, at various stages of the business process. What you see on the screen is how a form looks. On the left hand side I have a form which shows you different um, attributes like first name, last name and they are of type text field and then you can also see I have a supervisor which is of a profile search um, uh, which can pull on all the sup supervisor from uh, from the system and you display uh, to the performer uh, to select uh, the manager of a profile. And then on the right hand side, I have a uh, another uh, attribute which is of a top down type um, and you can see it has some pre-populated values that can be used uh, while creating the, the profile. Again, uh, these values can be pre-populated at the time of attribute creation or you can um, add it um, uh, even later on. Uh, moving on to the next component, uh, pages. Uh, pages are a collection of forms and few other components. In the system, um, pages can be used to uh, create different sections uh, within um, within the page. Um, for example, you can have a form which displays uh, or collect personal information of the profile, or you can have another form which collect employment information uh, uh, for the profile, and then you can have another uh, uh, another form within the page to collect. Um, some other additional attributes and there are a few other additional components that you can uh, add to the page for example page title uh, page owner information uh, page progress bar so that uh, someone who is performing um, or creating the contract can see how many steps have been completed and how many are pending and and, uh, and moving on to the next component workflows so there are four type of workflows uh, in um, create update batch and automated uh, and as the name suggests, create is to create the profile, uh, update is to update the profile, batch is when you want to um, run the same action um, for multiple profiles, and automated is when you want to trigger a workflow automatically based on certain conditions. And I will go over some of these during my, uh, du during my demo. Uh, so what you see on this slide is a create um, workflow. And it, it's very similar to what we see on Identity IQ that you have a quick link through which you can trigger this workflow. Uh, so this is a, just a snapshot of how uh, the create workflow look like on the screen. And then moving on to the next uh, workflow, which is update workflow. So workflow, um, update workflow doesn't display on the dashboard. It It is displayed when you select a profile and when you want to modify that profile. Um, so that's why uh, it, it's update workflow. Moving on to the next one, which is a batch workflow. Um, again, as I said, batch workflow is when you want to perform the same action 
uh, for multiple profiles uh, you can use batch workflow and here you can see that I have a condition called profile status is terminated and um, all the profiles which have been terminated in the systems are displayed there and I can choose to select a couple of them or all of them and I can uh, I can trigger a batch workflow which will be uh, just to activate them uh, in the system the next workflow is uh, automated workflow which is triggered when a certain conditions is met for example sending notification to the manager when the end date is approaching or even triggering the rehire on the effective start date uh, or even triggering termination on the effective end date so these workflow will automatically be triggered when the conditions are met now let's get into uh, to the demo part so let me uh, pull up uh, my name instance so what you see on the screen is uh, I, I have logged in as a admin or as a manager and uh, as you can see on the screen I have two um, as you can see I have two uh, create profiles uh, workflow create non-employee and rehire non-employee so these these are displayed on the uh, on the dashboard because these are create workflows and I will be going over the create non employee uh, process first so um, so on the screen what you see uh, I have a create non employee create workflow uh, so this is displayed more similar to what we see as a quick link in IAQ um, so let me start the creation of non employee workflow so this the first action on this workflow is to gather the information about the contractor that, we, that we're going to create. So let me input the information uh, here. I already have um, some of the demo users created. So uh, let me enter the start date and you can have different kind of validations on start date and end date. For example, the start date cannot be in the past or end date uh, cannot be more than 365 days. Uh, so these validations are available for you to use out of the box. and. Um, let me select the supervisor so um, you can definitely have more filters here for example if you are creating a, uh, a non-employee for a particular department so you can only pull employees from that depart particular department so you can have that kind of filters for the supervisor and depending on what kind of contractor you are creating uh, you can have different fields populated so in my case if I am selecting contractor then I will have uh, few fields generated and if I'm selecting student then I can display another form which you can um, you know request for more information like student enrollment number or the the field of study so let me select contractor and then I will select uh, what's the vendor company for this contractor and then once the the form is submitted um, there will be another review form that's going to come up for me I think the system is a little slow. So while this is waiting to um, get submitted, um, the second use case I want to demo is uh, transferring the contractor from one manager to another manager. So that is of type uh, update. Um, so anyone who is logged in and has access to that workflow um, we will be able to trigger the workflow and then that sponsor or manager will become the the new manager of that uh, of that profile let me try to resubmit this okay so as you can see i have a review form if i want to change any of these fields i can go back and then update that for example if i have selected a wrong manager i can go back and update the manager and then let me go ahead and approve this form and then uh, this form um, has an approval work item associated to it so there's an approval I need to submit so let me say approve it and then uh, this will go to the sponsor or supervisor that has been selected at the time of creation so let me go ahead and approve it and then once the form has been submitted you will see that a, a profile has been created and let me pull that profile So as you can see here, there are a few fields that were not calculated or requested at the time of 
content creation for example like username worker id so all these fields have been generated through value builder and even the contactor email address so once your contactor profile has been created you can aggregate that in uh, sale point entity uh, now and then you can uh, ground the access to that non profile so another use case i want to show is the transfer contractor um, again since it's an update workflow it will be visible when you select a profile uh, so i have it here displayed here as a quick link um, so once I click on this transfer contractor, it will again um, show me information about the, the profile, what's the current uh, profile data and what who, uh, what's the current supervisor and who is going to be the new supervisor. And there are some additional fields that you see on the screen which can be pulled from the manager. For example, if you want uh, the non-employee to or the contractor to have the same area, department or group, as the the supervisor or the manager you can automatically pull that from the from the sponsor profile yeah while we are waiting for this let me go ahead and run uh, the aggregation this might take few seconds to run and pull the profile uh, so let me jump back to the transfer contractor. So as you can see here, it's showing me uh, some information about the profile that I've selected, who is the uh, current supervisor and who is going to be the new supervisor and what value will be inherited from the new supervisor. So you can see um, the contractor will get all these value populated based on and I can select whether I want to transfer this uh, profile immediately or I want to do it in future. So again, that's an option too. And once I approve this, uh, I will see all those values getting updated into the profile and then that can be pulled into, into your IG platform and, and uh, update the access accordingly. Uh, uh, so uh, that concludes the demo. Um, and just as a recap, uh, 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 I hope this gave you a sneak peek on how you can leverage SailPoint Num uh, for contractor onboarding and offboarding and similar to what we have traditionally seen in IAQ using custom forms and workflows. Thank you.